editors of newspaper and magazines often go to extremes to provide their readers with unimportant facts and statistics. Last year, our journalists have been instructed by a well-known magazine to write an article on the president's palace in the new Africa Republic. When the article arrived, the editor read the first sentences and then refused to punish it. The article began hundreds of steps lead to the high wall which surrounds the president palace. The editor at once sent the journalists a fan of, of the exact number of steps and the height of the wall. The journalists immediately set out to obtain these important facts, but he took a long time to send them. Meanwhile, the editor was getting impatient, for the magazine was soon go to press. He sent the journalists two more facts, but received no reply. He sent yet another facts, informing the journalist that if he did not reply soon, he would be fired. When the journalist again failed to reply, the editor relentlessly punished the article as it had ordinarily been written. A week later, the editor at last received a fax from the journalists. Not only the poor man being arrested, but he have been sent to prison as well. However, he have at least been allowed to send a fax in which he informed the editor that he have been arrested while cutting the 1084 steps leading to the 15th floor wall which surrounded the president's palace. The expensive shops in a famous architect near Pasadena were just opening. At this time of the morning, the architect were almost empty. Mr. Taylor, the owner of a jewelry shop, was admiring a new window display. Two of his assistants have been working busily since 8 o'clock and have only just finished it. Diamond necklaces and rings have been beautifully arranged on a background of black red. After glancing at the display for several months, several minutes, Mr. Taylor went back into his shop. The silence was suddenly broken when a larger car, with its headlights on and its horn buzzing, warning down the architect. He came to a shop outside the jewel. One man stayed at a wheel while two others with black stock stockings over their face jumped out and smashed the window of the shop with iron bar. While this was going on, Mr. Taylor was upstairs. He and his staff began throwing furniture out of the window. Chairs and tables went flying into Akiti. One of the chairs was struck by a heavy status. When he was too busy holding himself to diamonds to notice any pain, the wake was all over in three minutes. For the man swam back into the car and it moved off at a fantastic speed just as it was leaving, Mr. Taylor washed out and ran after it flowing as strange and fast. But it was impossible to stop these thieves. They have got away with thousands of pounds worth of diamonds. Have it ever happened to you? Have you ever put your trousers in the washing machines and then remember that there was a larger bank note in your back pocket. When you rescued your trousers, did you find the nose was whiter than white? People who live in Britain need it desperate. When they make mistakes like this, and a lot of people do, fortunately for them, the Bank of England has a team called Midnight Ladies which deals with claims from people who feed their money to a machine or to their dog. Dogs, it seems, love to chew up money. 
a West case concerns stream breaking where finance John John once a successful furniture business. John have a very good day and put his wallet containing three thousand pounds into the microwave oven for safekeeping. Then he and Jane went house rising. When they got home, Jane cooked their dinner in the microwave oven and without realizing we, we realizing it cooked their finance wallet as well. Image their dismay when they found a beautifully cooked wallet and looks turns to ash. John went to see his bank manager who sent the remains of wallet and the money to the special department of the Bank of England in Newcastle. The motorlet ladies they examined the remains and John got all his money back. So long as there is something to identify, we will give people their money back, said a spokeswoman for the bank. Last year, we paid 1.5 million on 21,000 claims. Damaged the banknotes. The queens had appeared on the English banknotes, and Lady referred to this. The Grey St. Bernard Pass connects Switzerland to Italy at 2473 meters. It is the highest mountain pass in Europe. The famous monastery of St. Bernard, which was founded in the 11th century, lies about a mile away. For hundreds of years, St. Bernard dogs have sated the lives of travelers crossing the dangerous pass. These funny dogs, which were first from Asia were used as watchdogs even in Roman times. Now that a tunnel has been built through the mountains, the pass is less dangerous. But each year, the dogs are still run out into shown whenever a traveler is in difficult. Despite the new tunnel, there are still a few people who actually attempt to cross the pass on foot. During the summer months, the monastery is very busy, for it is visited, visited by thousands of people who cross the pass in car. As there are so many people about, the door have to be kept in a special enclosure. In winter, however, <coughs> life at the monastery is quite different. The temperature drops to minus. 30 degree and very few people attempt to cross the pass. The monks prefer winter to summer for they have more privacy. The dogs have greater freedom too for they are allowed to wander outside their enclosure. The only regular visitors visitor to the monastery in winter are parties of skyers who go there as Christmas and Easter. These young people who love the peace of the mountains always receive a warm welcome St. Bernard's Monastery. Cats never fail to fascinate human beings. They can be friendly and affectionate towards humans, but they lead mystery lives of their own as well. They never become some mischief like dogs and horses. As a result, humans have learned to respect learning independence. No cats remain subjects of humans all, all their lives. One of the things that fascinates us most about cats is the popular belief that they have nine lives. Apparently, there is a good deal of truth in this idea. A cat's ability to survive well is based on fact. Recently, the New York Animal Medical Center made a study of 132 cats over a period of five months. All these cats have one experience in common. They have fallen off high buildings, yet only eight of them died from shock or injuries. Of course, 
New York is the ideal place for such an interesting study because there is no shortage of tall buildings. There are plenty of high wide windows to fell from one cat. Sabina fell for two stories, yet only suffer from a broken tooth. Cats behave like well trained paratroopers, a daughter said. It seems that the third cats fell the less they are likely to injure themselves in a long job. They reach speeds of 60 miles an hour and more. At high speeds, falling cats have time to relax. They stretch out their legs like flying squirrels. This increases their air resistance and reduces the shock of impact when they hit the ground.